Okay, so I'm going to show you all the tips that I use to create artwork as fast as possible without sacrificing quality. Um, so this isn't going to be about like how to optimize cycles or what GPU you should get or anything like that. It's just about workflow tips that you should use to be as productive as possible to create artwork as fast as possible. It goes for other things too. It doesn't have to be artwork, but this is this is an artwork channel. So renders um, as fast as possible. Like I said, without sacrificing any quality. It's just about getting the same amount of work done that you normally would, the same quality of work done that you normally would in way less time. Um, yeah, the first tip is, and probably nobody wants to hear this, but you have to be focused. You have to get rid of all the distractions in front of you that like, and anything that's not helping you achieve your goal during that you know, hour or two of being focused, don't have it open. Like, Don't have Discord open on your like second monitor or something. Don't be watching a video in the background while you're trying to create artwork. Don't don't have your phone in front of you. Like what I do is I take my phone, I just chuck it on the bed next to me and I don't check it at all until I'm done that session of work. If I have to check it, then I'll I'll sure you have to sometimes for just to get something, but try to not look at it at all uh during that time. Um yeah, some of you guys like you have like multiple monitors open and like discords on one and Twitter's in the other one and you have a YouTube video playing. Like don't, don't do any of that unless it's directly related to the work you're trying to get done during that time. Okay, the next thing is um, use the asset library. So this is my default startup file. I have, um, well, I'll, I'll get into all the windows in a second, but I have the asset library open by default here. So what this is is you can see, if you don't know how to use this, um, just go watch, go look it up on YouTube. Just type in how to use the asset library in Blender and you'll find it. Um, but once you figure out how to use this, put like, organize your stuff. So I have any pack of stuff that I download from ArtStation or from TurboSquid or whatever, any pack you download, just put that into its own folder. That's kind of the way I do it. Or anytime you model something, put a group of similar models into its own folder and just name it what it is. You don't have to name like every single asset. Like you can see here, like these are a lot of these are not labeled at all, but um, as long as you can kind of see where everything is and you know where it is, that's fine. That's going to work just fine. Um, yeah. Name, name your folders, obviously like I have a folder of buildings, but you don't have to name like every single individual model by itself. But yeah, the reason this is important is because once you're actually focused uh, and you've closed Discord and everything, once you're actually focused, you don't want to break that focus because you have to go and search you know, your hard drive to find some random 3D model you've downloaded a year ago. You, know? you want to have everything you already in the library so that you can just drag and drop it as soon as you need it. So here's an example. like If you are working on your scene and you get to the point where you need to throw a person in there, look, I have this whole folder of people that are just ready to go. Textures are on. I just drag and drop it in here and it's done. I don't have to think about it. So there you go. Same thing with buildings. Like I don't want to, if I need a building in my scene, I don't want to spend time making one or finding one or going on Turbo Squid and downloading one and like downloading a kit bash pack and then it, like, like just have it already organized. And then that way when you're working, you can just drag and drop anything you need in here and it's just ready to go. This is super powerful if you use it correctly. Um, and it save, save everything in here. Like anything you make that's cool, just put it in here. Um, like I said, if you have your folders organized, it doesn't really matter how much stuff you have in here because you'll know where it all is. Um, yeah. If I go to my C drive, um, I have all the kit bash packs that I've downloaded. All just like there's hundreds of uh, assets that are just ready to go in here that, are, uh, that I can just drag and drop into anything. Um, so yeah, that's, that's super important to have. Okay. The next thing is, um, yeah, let me talk about the rest of this workspace. So this is my, like I said, this is my default startup file. So when I open Blender, this is what opens is this exact scene. So I have, um, this is just the, the cube that I scaled down to like the height of a person just so I have a reference for scale. You could just use a model of a person that works better probably, but um, the more important thing is the windows. So I always have, um, I guess it's more like this. I always have 
the shader editor open up here because I'm always going back and forth working on textures. Um, so that's always open. And it, it seems like it's very small here. It's not a lot of space to work with. But you can always just drag this open to expand it. Or if you hold your mouse, just bring the mouse over any window and hit control space bar. And that'll just full screen whatever window you hover over. Um, yeah, the same thing with the UV editor. I, I'm always working on textures, so that's really important to have open. So it's just always there. Asset library, again, you're always dragging and dropping new things into your scene. Um, not always, but um, you do that very often, so I think it's important to have that open. And then this, I like having a second viewport open just with the camera's perspective from rendered view open. So I have one viewport over here, which is just in solid view or just in wireframe view. So it's always snappy and I can always nav navigate around here really easily. But then also I can always see any changes I make here. I can always see what it's going to look like in the rendered image from the camera's perspective. Some people have like rendered view open on one viewport. I just think that doesn't work as well because you're not seeing it from the perspective of like where everyone else is going to see it when they, when you render your image, you know, nobody's going to see your 3d scene, but everyone is going to see like the 2d image that you get when you render it. So having that uh, viewport from the camera's perspective is, is very important, I think. Um, yeah. And then you can do whatever you want with like the rest of these windows. I just kind of put these up here and you don't have to copy this exact, this exact, uh, workspace but this is just what works best for me and I recommend like organizing it in a way for you that works for the kind of things that you're doing and then save that as the default startup file if you don't know how to do that you just go to file just organize the windows how you want them and then press file defaults and then hit hit a um, save startup file here so anytime you open it up it'll just open up all these windows in the exact uh, spots that you put them in here okay the last tip is do daily renders. Um, you don't have to do daily renders for like like people level. Like do it for like fourteen years every single. Like you don't need to do that. Um, some people still do like daily renders for like years at a time. Don't miss a day. You don't need to go that extreme. Um, just the reason that I'd recommend this is because it teaches you how to work really fast. Um, so if you're a beginner, I'd say get to a, like a beginner level so you don't build bad habits doing this because if you do it straight away, you'll you'll probably build like bad habits and you'll take shortcuts that you probably shouldn't take over and over and over again and you'll, that's how you'll learn. I don't think that's a good idea. So I think you should get like, just get to a beginner level, like get to a level where you know like basic UV unwrapping, basic modeling, like how to navigate the software like at, at a fundamental level. And then once you get to that point, and you kind of know all the basics, then do daily renders for like a month or something or do it for a couple of weeks. And just doing that for a little bit of time will, it'll just teach you how to work so much faster. And then moving forward, you'll always have that. The reason I don't like sticking with daily renders, uh, like committing to it for years at a time or something like that is because if you, if you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to do daily renders for a year, you're going to have days in there where you want to spend more time on something because sometimes sometimes you just make something and it's garbage like that that just happens so you want to have days or you want to have uh time on those days where you just make pure garbage to spend another day on it or another two or three days on it to get it to the point where it's not you're not just like sharing complete trash online so i think it's valuable having extra time if you need it but also having the ability to work very, very fast um, and the ability to do daily renders most days. But then occasionally, if you need that extra day or two, you can you can do it and you don't have to like post complete garbage online. Yeah, so those are all my tips. I hope that's useful. Um, like I said, the most, the most important thing here is just be focused. Like don't be distracted by your phone while you're working. Don't have YouTube playing while you're working. Um, I, I like having music, but I try not to spend too much time like s sorting through music and like finding the perfect song. Just like make a playlist and then stick to that playlist if you can. Um, I've tried podcasts and that never works well. Um, having a podcast in the background, it's it, my my output is always so much worse if I do that. Or with like if, if I have a video playing in the background, it's always so much worse. Everything's just so much slower, even if it doesn't feel like it right away. Yeah, trust me, it's just not not a good way to work. The best way is just uh, like music is fine and then pure pure focus on what you're doing. No phone. 
no no distractions. Um, just do one thing for like an hour, an hour and a half, two hours maybe, and then then get out of there and you're done. You know. Okay, so yeah, I hope that was useful. Um, yeah, peace.